Hello. Continuing, we're going to look at how to find the area between two curves. So if we're asked to find the area between f of x and g of x, where f of x is given by uh, 8 minus x squared, negative quadratic, so a frowny face, uh, and g of x is equal to x squared, positive x squared, positive quadratic, it's going to be a smiley face. So we're looking for this area in between here. Uh, so that is the region that we are asked to find out about. So we have, uh, we are asked about areas under curves. So unless they very specifically say we're using the trapezoidal rule or something like that, that means we're going to deal with integration. So if they talk about areas on the curves, we're dealing with integration. And we want to integrate our function from here over to here. And we uh, want to get the area underneath the blue curve minus the area that is underneath the red curve. That's essentially how this is going to work out. If you look at it geometrically, you'll be able to figure out these kinds of questions fairly straightforwardly. So if we look at, we take, drop down, and we want to find the limits of our integral here and here, uh, we want to get the area underneath the blue curve, all of this area underneath here, and then if we take away the area that's underneath our red curve, we'd be left with the bit that we want. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to get the integral from a to b of uh, f of x, the top function, and take away the integral from a to b of g of x. And sometimes you have to get a little bit creative with what intervals you have to work out. Uh, most of the time, it'll be something fairly straightforward like this. Sometimes you might get need to get a little bit creative with your intervals. But in general, this is how we're going to approach it. We're going to have the area in between two curves. And just ge uh, geometrically, you can see that what we need to do is find the area underneath one curve and subtract the area underneath the other curve to get the area in between. So that's what we are going to do. Uh, now, we need to find A and B. So what are A and B? Well, they're where our lines cross each other. What's the fancy word for where our functions or our lines cross each other? That's going to be the point of intersection. So often in these questions, we'll need to find that point of intersection. Sometimes it'll be like the root of one of the functions or both of the functions. Uh, and often it will be a standard point of intersection. So how are we going to get the point of intersection? So uh, I'll write this in for our notes, uh, A and B, points of intersection. Section of F and G. Okay, so uh, that's what we need to uh, sort out. Uh, so we need to get the intersection of uh, f and g. Well, f of x is y is equal to 8 minus x squared. Always remember f of x or g of x or function of x equals something means y is equal to that. And y is equal to x squared. Well, this is a really easy um, simultaneous equation to do, a really easy e point of intersection to find because we have y equals and y equals. So if we find where the y's equal each other, uh, we are going to find the point of intersection. Uh, so we need to simply set them equal to each other. This y equals this y equals our two functions. y equals equals x squared. Set them equal to each other. Uh, and then we have uh, then we are trying to solve this equation here. So it's actually kind of more distracting than helpful. Uh, so now we're trying to solve uh, this equation. Uh, so we want to get the x squared by themselves. And we take our 
square root and this time there is no reason not to take into account both the positive and neg negative possibilities so we end up with plus or minus uh, 2 is equal to x. Just a side note, you could have also solved this by a uh, difference of two squares. There'd be no problem with uh, doing that. You would have ended up with x. Sorry. You could have rearranged this uh, formula just as easily if you happened to spot it, that x squared minus 4 was equal to 0, and you would have ended up factorizing down to x was plus or minus 2 in the same way. So that would be another way of solving that problem, and there's no issue with using that at all. It's a perfectly good way to solve it. Uh, so we now have our points of intersection, which give us the limits of our integral, the boundaries of our integrals. So now we want to integrate f of x from minus 2 to plus 2, and f of x is 8 minus x squared dx, and we are going to take away the area underneath the red curve to give us the area in between. And it's really good to think about this geometrically this, as a picture, because it is effectively a graphical argument. Because we're looking at the area under curves. That's the fundamental principle we're at. Now, give yourself quite a lot of width for this, because you're going to have your two boxes, your two square brackets for this uh, integral, and your two square brackets for this integral. So be conscious of the fact when you're planning out your uh, work that you are going to need quite a wide section of paper for writing out your answer here. Otherwise, it'll go between two lines and can get quite confusing. So we do our integral. 8x to the 1 all over 1 minus x cubed all over 3 minus 2 to 2 minus x cubed all over 3, increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power. And that's our work. And now we're going to uh, sub in. Uh, and we have, let's keep these as separate blocks for just a minute, 8 or 2. This one always goes first. The top, the larger number always goes in first, minus the smaller number. Substitution. Minus. 2 cubed all over 3. That's my first bit. Minus, subbing in the minus 2. Minus, minus 2 to be cubed. Be careful. Your intuition for squaring something that it's going to become positive could cause problems uh, here. So this is not going, uh, the minus 2 cubed is going to be minus 8. So just be careful of that. It's an easy mistake to make when we're so used to squaring things. 2 cubed all over 3 minus minus 2 to be cubed all over 3. We get 16 minus 8 all over 3. Uh, minus minus 16 plus 8 all over 3 minus 8 all over 3 minus minus 8 all over 3 equal to 16 minus 8 all over 3 plus 16 minus 8 all over 3 minus 8 all over 3, minus by minus is a uh, plus minus 8 all over 3, uh, is 32, uh, and that's 4, 8, 32 as well, so um, minus 32 all over 3, uh, is going to be be three that would be 96 yeah 64 all over three units squared 
Uh, and that is how we can uh, work through our, uh, that is how we can uh, work through finding the area between curves. Now, just to point out to you again, this is very much a geometric, very much a graphical type of argument that we need to be able to make. If we were asked, if I put this in in blue, if we were asked for this area in here, we would be able to find, uh, I talked about the limits of the integral uh, having to be a bit creative um, sometimes. We would have to get the integral of our f of x from the root here to the root here minus uh, the integral of uh, g of x from our points of intersection. Now, that's very easy to see graphically. It would be almost impossible to figure out otherwise. But to get that blue area there, we'd be going from the uh, roots of our function here, which would be plus or minus, which would be uh, plus or minus root x, sorry, root 8, I should say. If you work that out, you get plus or minus uh, root 8. So you'd be integrating our f of x, just to write it down for you, the uh, blue area uh, would be uh, the integral uh, of f of x uh, from minus root 8 up to plus root 8 uh, of 8 minus x squared. All I did was find the roots of that equation uh, and uh, we'd be getting all of the area underneath our blue curve between those points and then subtracting what we just got so minus the red area that we just got so this stuff here uh, so if we get a question like that that involves a little bit more thinking about our uh, regions that we have to integrate over. It's no problem so long as we draw a fairly accurate um, sketch that helps our intuition with what we need to integrate between and what we need to take away. Uh, so really it's uh, getting very comfortable and confident with your uh, sketches that gives you the groundwork for this type of question. Uh, and after that the integration itself doesn't tend to be terribly complicated. A little bit laborious but uh, not terribly complicated. Uh, and that is what we need uh, for now.